is the, that the bug wasn't in Blender itself, but it was in, an, in another package in a library that Blender used. And yeah, it was pretty annoying to spend a whole day to search in the Blender code. And I found out that the uh, Blender code base regarding audio is pretty, yeah, let's say ugly. So I decided to do the whole, th whole thing from scratch. And yeah, so since 2.5, Blender is using my audio code. So, Blender Audio, uh, I'd like to you know who of you has used Blender Audio before? Okay, not really many people. And uh, did you have a problem with it? No? <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, everybody knows Blender Audio is one of the main features of Blender and it, uh, it worked all the time, and yes, I'm being sarcastic, but uh, I hope that this presentation will introduce you to Blender Audio and its use cases, and uh, you might want to use it later. Okay, so the contents of this presentation will be, uh, I will give you a short introduction to what uh, sound, audio, and music are. So for computer graphics people, as most of you are, uh, I will do some comparisons to uh, how things work in graphics. Then I will tell about Blender and audio, what works and what doesn't, and what can it be used for. Then I will show the sequencer, the video sequencer, and then the 3D audio, which is the project I worked on during this summer. And as the last points, I have some other topics that are possible with Blender. So, audio, sound, and music. Uh, sound is a wave, uh, which uh, is actually pressure through the air and works in some ways similar to light, so light waves. And um, the difference is that life spreads if, it, if the direction of light is uh, forwards, then the light wave uh, moves left, right, up and down. And if the sound wave moves forward, the wave also moves forward and backward. Um, okay, and the digital rep representation uh, of sound is called audio. So you have to, uh, you have a physical wave and you have to use samples of it and then you get audio and can use it in your computer. And the properties of these uh, audio waves in the computer are first of all the sample rate, which you com can compare to the frames per second you have uh, when doing an animation. Then you have the sample format, which is 16-bit uh, most of the times, uh, which you can compare to how your pixel data is stored. So if you have 8-bit eight eight bit per color channel, that's exactly what uh, the sample format in audio means. And last but not least, you have a channel count. So you have not only one speaker, but probably stereo, or in home, cineta, uh, in home cinema, you have 5.1, for example. So five channels, front, rear, and the subwoofer. And this is what the channel count tells. Now, uh, you can compare that to stereo, to two images, what you need for 3D uh, visuals, uh, which is used quite frequently now in the cinemas. So, and then we're coming to music. For music, we, people are using notes, and that's probably what you can compare to pixels in uh, graphics. And every note has a pitch, so how high is the pitch, uh, which kind of compares to the color. Um, the volume, which is used for dynamics, uh, can you compare to the value? As a, so if you have the hue, saturation value, color model, then frequency would be the hue, and volume would be the value. Then the duration uh, is also important. Uh, for still pictures, you might think that there is no duration of how long a pixel is displayed, but 
actually the duration is infinity. You can do the same with sound, but if you have the same sound playing for an hour or so, it's getting pretty annoyed, so uh, you typically use uh, normally uh, a shorter duration for sounds. And the last note property is the timbre or tex ex texture, which actually is the quality of the sound, so that you can differ between a piano playing the same note as a violin, for example. Okay, and now, what does Blender have to do with audio? Uh, here you can see a list of use cases. Um, the first three basically have been avail available before 2.5. Um, the video sequence editor has its own audio strips, then the game engines had, had its own sounds, and you had the audio window which basically only showed the waveform which you could use for lip sync. And all of these systems were pretty disconnected and had their own code, and this is unified now. And the uh, new feature since uh, this summer, or since uh, 2.6, is 3D audio, uh, where you can play speakers in your scene and render 3D audio animation. Uh, we will come to that later. And sound-based animation is also another topic you can use any sound file to um, create so an F curve and base your physical uh, visual animation on the sound. Okay, and then we have non-use cases. So people were asking me for uh, some things of these uh, points here, but Blender is not intended to be a digital audio workstation which can do everything. Um, in German, we have a word for this. It's called Eierlegende Wollmilchsau, which you could translate word by word and would mean egg laying wool milk pig, so an animal that has about everything, yeah. But uh, Blender is a 3D application and mainly a 3D graphics application and not an audio application. But there are open source audio applications and you can use that in combination with Blender, and that's also what I'm going to show. Okay, the sequencer uh, is pretty straightforward from its usage. You can, as with any um, movie strips, you can add the sound strips uh, and do some cutting, moving them around, trimming, etc. Uh, and in, uh, in 2.6, you can uh, display the waveform directly in the sound strips, so we don't need the audio window anymore. Uh, let us show an example of this. Uh, this is 2.6. So, yeah, that's what I wanted. I just opened the sequencer and add a sound effect and have here a music file. And now I can move this around. Um, I can cut it, move this also around, and if I play it back. You can hear that weird effect because, uh, because I just moved it uh, so that the sound plays twice, basically. Um, then, under the properties, you can enable drawing the waveform of a sound. And this is exactly what you can use for uh, lip sync. So you basically see how uh, the volume at this position is. So if uh, you have a speech uh, audio file, you can just uh, uh, trim your animation to work with these volume structures here. Okay, the next new thing that Blender 2.6 has is some animation. Volume animation has been there before, but we now also have pitch and panning. And I want to quickly demonstrate this. Uh, I've moved these two strips above each other here, and now I would like to blend them so that one gets silent and the other gets louder. So I just animate the volume here. And I have to set it to zero here.
and now I have a smooth transition. Um, okay, but that has been possible before and what I can also uh, edit now is the panning. But for panning to work I need a mono sound file because a stereo sound file already has the channel information. And for this reason I can uh, I sh should be able to add this as mono. Uh, I will just add it. I can change the setting afterwards, but I have to use the outliner. So we have sounds here. It's the second we loaded and I set this to mono here, so now we can animate the panning. And I start with zero, and just to show the panning. So you should hear how it goes from left to right. That's panning and the probably most interesting sounding uh, animation we can do is um, pitch animation. So a pitch of one basically means that the playback speed is normal. And if you get faster, um, the pitch also rises. So uh, what basically happens is that the sound file is played faster uh, and this changes the frequency of the sound. And here it gets lower. And back to normal again, just for effect. Okay, this is how pitch animation works. And Unfortunately, we have one problem uh, with this animation type. Um, Ton already said that there is no uh, real dependency graph for animation yet. So we have some difficulties uh, calculating all this stuff and we can't yet calculate the actual uh, change of the strip length. So it might be that if you do pitch animation, that if you seek uh, somewhere in between, that the playback position is not correct anymore. So to make sure that uh, you get the, uh, to get it working correctly, you might have to start it uh, from the beginning to get the right playback positions. But I hope that we can solve this problem at some later point. Okay, and then, uh, as I've already said, I'd like to show how you can use Blender with other uh, open source audio software so that you can do all that fancy stuff that uh, pro audio applications provide. And for this there is an uh, audio server called Check, uh, which you can use in Linux. And here I have uh, OpenArchDev MIDI or OpenArchDev Studio, which is another open source project, project from uh, <coughs> more or less um, known Blender user, which is who is called Christopher Jarrett. And I've got an example session here uh, from his wife. Okay, it doesn't work. Jack needs uh, exclusive control over the sound card, so I just had to kill any application that's using audio. And y you can see that this is uh, some composing application. You can place notes of different uh, musical instruments. And in the background, the Pro Audio Server Jack is running. And I want to show how you can use this with Blender. So I start Blender again. And in the user settings, user preferences, I set the audio output to check and can now uh, combine the playback of Blender with the playback of all the other check applications. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, add a movie strip. Mm. This one. So let it start at frame zero, or the animation. And then I enable audio video sync, which then basically combines uh, Blender with Jack so that every application that uses Jack play, uh, plays back uh, at the same time. And I would like to show this to you. I just pl press play now. And you can see. Blender is just playing the video. And at the same time, OpenOctave is also playing the audio. So I can, for example, move the cursor in here, and Blender also moves the cursor automatically. And if I stop animation, every other program also stops uh, playing back. So um, the next thing is 3D audio. And you might wonder what 3D audio actually is. And these are the basic effects that are there. Uh, we have some different calculations of distance-based uh, volume, basically. Then you might know the Doppler effect. Uh, directional sources are also so that you can hear the sound coming from the left or right or backwards and front if you have uh, more than two speakers. And uh, yeah, that's basically multi, uh, that's multi channel panning. Directional sources are kind of like um, spotlights. So if you add a single speaker object, you have kind of a point light. And you can set angles of this to just be a directional source. And last but not least, there is simple volume and pitch animation also. Okay, so um, what properties do we have here? So for distance-based attenuation, uh, you can set a distance model, which is possible in the uh, audio settings of the scene, which are here. And uh, the default model is uh, physically correct, but you can also use exponential or linear falloff of the volume. So uh, linear would be uh, if you are one meter far away and the volume is 100%, and you go five meters far away and the volume falls linearly uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, yeah, stronger. Uh, then you can set a maximum and a minimum volume. So no matter how far away, you will always have at least the minimum volume and at maximum the maximum volume. Uh, you can also set a reference and maximum distance. The reference distance basically just tells where the sound has a volume of 100%. And the maximum distance uh, tells when is the lowest volume reached. And then you have an attenuation factor which uh, uh, works differently depending on the distance model and uh, influences how fast the volume goes down the further you go away. Then the Doppler effect is um, an effect based on the speed of sound. Uh, you uh, for sure have heard it already if a uh, Formula One car, for example, passes, uh, you, can, you can hear the sound. And basically, the uh, engine is playing a constant sound, but the new is a pitch shift, which is created by the Doppler factor and is based on 
the fact that you're standing still and the other object moves. And, for, and to demonstrate this, I have also an example prepared. I'll just first stop this. And use normal audio again, and now I can demo this scene. We have an ambulance car which is moving at a, yeah, let's say high speed, and the camera is following it. Let's just play like this. Okay, now you hear some strange effects. That's because sometimes, because of the animation uh, problems we have, uh, we have uh, wrong animation values and we have to update the animation cache. That's what I can do with this button and this should have fixed it now. And I think you heard the effect when, now when the uh, ambulance car passes. Okay. Pardon? With the ambulance? That we can see the Doppler effect? Okay, sure, sure. Um, I sh should have. Yeah, this is the original sound. Just playing. So the, the pitch of an ambulance car is is changing, but I can I think you can hear the difference when exactly when the ambulance car passes. The pitch is getting lower in some. Okay. That was the doubler effect. Uh, yeah, and uh, the settings you have here is also the speed of sound. And you can also set the Doppler fac factor, which is not uh, physically based, but you can exaggerate the effect a little with it. Uh, okay, then we have directional sources, uh, where you can basically define a cone, which tells um, uh, how loud the volume should be. So there are two cones. The inner cone has full volume. Um, the outer cone, as a, so outside the outer cone you have a specified outer volume and between the inner and outer cone you have an interpolation of the volume. And to demonstrate this I want to show the uh, test file we have and all these settings also work in the game engine. But in the game engine you have to use um, the sound actuator instead of the speaker object. Um, yeah, but uh, they have the same capabilities, mostly. <coughs> so. You can hear the same siren sound again. Okay. You can hear a difference when you're inside the cone. I know it's a bit difficult to see and if you're outside the cone. But um, yeah, this um, has, doesn't have so many use cases, but imagine for example when you're uh, in a room, if that's a room, and you enter a door, uh, you want to get the volume louder, so you place a speaker with a cone angle of 180 degrees, so that's basically at one half you get full volume and at the other half less, well, uh, less volume so that you can hear uh, different volumes if you're inside and outside the room. Okay, other topics. We have the sound to F curve uh, operator which can bake the sound to an F curve for animation and we have a lot of properties here 
and it's quite difficult to explain those. So my tip for you is to just uh, play around with them and see what they do. Just a quick example, I have a cube here. I will quickly insert a location animation and then in the graph editor I have now three F curves and I can now bake a sound to these F curves and I will use this pink panther sound, bake it and now you can see uh, that the animation is based on that sound. Um, if I quickly add the same sound to the video sequence editor, you can now see that the cube moves depending on the uh, sound itself. Okay. Uh, I hope that I can show you a video. Uh, which is uh, which is online, but I fear that the internet is not fast enough, so I'll probably let it load and we can maybe watch it later. So then, one more thing thing we have uh, in Blender is the game engine audio, and here you can't use the speaker objects, uh, the new speaker objects but uh, you have the same settings with the sound actuator. And additionally, you also have a playback mode, so you can set the mode to uh, play and stop as soon as uh, the sound ends or stop at another time, and you can say uh, that the sound should loop or play ping pong. And for this, I will also show you the test file we have here. Um, where I have keys to demonstrate this uh, playback mode. So this is our test sound we have here. And if I press the first button, you hear the sound exactly playing once and stopping as soon as I release the key. Um, the second playback mode is uh, uh, AND, so it, it plays until the sound ends. So if I release the key, the sound finishes playing. Then we have the looping mode. So if I stay on the key now, uh, it loops all the time. And this also has a stop immediately, as you just heard, or stop as soon as the next end of the sound is reached. And then we have ping pong, which just plays the song forward and backward, also in a repeating manner. Also, again, with play uh, until I re release the key or play until uh, the complete sound stops. Okay, um, the last thing uh, I have here is uh, the Python scripting, which was uh, my Google Summer of Code work uh, the year before, so not this summer, but the summer before. And during that time, I wrote the Python API for the audio library. And uh, I will try to get the demo I did for this. Again, it's low. Let's see if we can. Okay, so this is the demo on audio animation, a short demo I made. So we can have, for example, an equalizer effect by uh, using the uh, sound to F curve operator. Okay, but I see the video is really slowly loading. So we'll probably switch to the Python demo now. And all I have to do now is create a script. And I 
register the script, and I can now Okay, something is wrong here. <laughs> Pardon? Uh, I don't know if it has a main function. Okay, let's try. Nah, same problem here. Let's try a text editor. Uh, text editor works. Um, yeah, let's just. I import the script and just say. Play. Okay, this is wrong. Okay, something. Okay, this one. So all this script does um, is that it uh, synthesizes a sound with the Python API. So I have no uh, sound file in the background. I just have the script uh, with the string of notes. And then it's using the Python API uh, to play the sound. So just to quickly view this, um, here I'm creating a sine tone uh, with a frequency based on the string, so on the notes. Then I change the volume for a pause to null, uh, or I square it so that we can get the original Tetris effect. Um, then I can limit the sound, fade in and fade out, and then I join the different notes and yeah, get the Tetris sound of, out of the script. And the advantage you have now is that you can use uh, the Python AP everywhere. So you can use it in the game engine or you can uh, use it in Blender itself. Okay, let's see. Time is nearly over. So uh, here, just to finish this, uh, some future points. We have uh, head-related transfer functions that would be interesting. Um, this is basically a technique to simulate um, the direction of a sound. So if it's coming from the front or behind or up or below someone uh, through speakers, uh, not, not speakers, through headphones. So where you have a, um, uh, yeah, it's a bit difficult to explain, but it, it's based on the anatomy of our ears that the sound is changed uh, depending on f uh, the direction the sound comes from. And uh, the head-related transfer functions use exactly this uh, to be able to uh, create uh, directional sounds from any direction uh, with just two speakers, which are the headphones. Then we have automatic lip sync as possible audio target. So you just import a sound file and Blender detects the phonemes of it and you can connect the phonemes to your rig rigged animation so that you just Im have to import the sound file and you can immediately see your face rig speaking. And one really advanced topic is uh, reverbation so that you can uh, hear the sound. Uh, so it's basically a physical simulation similar to the lights uh, bouncing around in a room, uh, which can be done with audio also, so that you can these effects. Um, uh, the sound is different when you speak in a cathedral as if you're outside. Um, you get echoes and touch things, for example. Uh, okay. But the problem is these are uh, really advanced topics and uh, as I had no sound coding knowledge before I started working on Blender, uh, it's a bit out of my scope and if anyone's interested in joining the Blender audio development team, I would really appreciate that. 
Okay, and just to show a final example, uh, which you probably have seen already, is this space uh, scene with models from LensWap. I created to demonstrate the 3D audio effects in for my Google Summer of Code project. It's a bit slow on this laptop. But I hope that you can hear, for example, depending on where the laser shot is coming from, you can hear it right or left. Uh, the Doppler effect in this example is pretty, yeah, physically correct, so it's not really uh, easy, easy to hear. Uh, but you can also hear that depending on how far away anything is, um, the volume gets louder or not. You, for example, have to listen very closely to hear the shots from the other spacecraft. Yeah, it's, it's really silent, okay? Okay, so that's 3D audio. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> no clue what that was. Huh? Questions? Yeah? yeah. Uh, there is basically no limit. Uh, it, uh, depends on the output device you have. So if you, um, the normal output device in Blender is uh, OpenAL, and on Windows uh, it depends on your sound card and on your driver, uh, which supplies OpenAL, how many sources can be played, and on the Linux uh, we have OpenAL Soft, which is a software audio renderer, uh, and basically has unlimited sources. So as long as your CPU can calculate it, you can, or as long as you have enough memory, you can use as many sources as you wish. Further questions? Yeah? So you want mixing of audio in Blender? Well, what the sequence editor basically does is mixing audio. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm um, not sure if I understand you correctly now, but uh, you want to get an external audio source to play the animation inside Blender. Yeah. yeah. Okay, for re real time applications or what? Okay, well, why can't you use a sound file? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah? Okay, so you want a more interactive version of this, so that it can change. Yeah, okay, the, the, the reason that this is a bake operator is uh, just that um, 
doing that in real time is pretty slow and we had a modifier before so that you can dynamically change the sound but this was basically unusable because it was really too slow and this is partially caused by the animation system which unfortunately is not laid out for audio it's it's for graphics not for audio and there are some problems we have and this is also the reason why we have this update animation cache button here so yeah i wish it would be different but uh, maybe we can tackle this when you have a better dependency graph and such things yeah okay any other questions? Yeah? Okay, yeah, there, there is a setting. You can see here the format. You can choose how many channels you want to output. So if you do... Yeah, those are presets. Yeah. Okay, you want to have a dynamic setup. Um, basically, it's possible, but it's not coded yet, okay? <laughs> Further questions? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, that's a good point. The ears is, are always on the active camera at the moment. And as we have no head related transfer functions yet, uh, we don't have to define where the ears exactly are. Uh, it's just a single point which uh, is at the, yeah, where the camera is. And yeah, with head related transfer functions, we probably need another mechanism. but. Maybe we will add microphones later so that you can set where listeners should be. Okay, but at the moment we just listen as the camera. Yeah? From this point in the list here. Hmm. Uh, uh, head-related transfer functions were the last point to do for this year's Google Summer of Code, which would have been optional. Um, yeah, I'd like to implement it, but um, it's quite complicated, and at the moment I don't have the time. But uh, I also had automatic lip sync as a Google Summer of Code proposal. Uh, and I think this would be better. Uh, a, mm, yeah, a better feature to implement as I think more people will, will need it, okay? Because uh, all that audio stuff is fine in Blender, but uh, there are other applications which are also capable of it, and you can already link Blender to it. And automatic lip sync is something that really has to do with the uh, things people do with Blender, okay? Nobody uses Blender to play audio, they use it to, to animation, and for this, automatic lip sync would be my primary target as next. <coughs> okay, yeah? Mm, shouldn't be a problem as soon as automatic lip sync is there. Depends on the algorithm. <laughs> yeah, I don't have it implemented, so I don't know if it's real time capable, but uh, if the algorithm supports it, then why not? Yeah, so you can, could use it for the game engine also, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the audio library supports it, but so far there's no use case for Blender, so yeah, okay. Any other questions? Then I thank you for listening.
Yeah, we would like to show the thread from YouTube. Uh, the speaker's going. 